This is an extra example. Again, direct shear test, we're going to use the data from the previous example, example four, and then perform a couple of additional calculations here. So the, for the first one, so we are asked to basically we have the soil specimen from example four, and then we're asked for two things here. One, if a direct shear is conducted with a normal force of 80 pounds, what's the shear stress at failure? Okay. So this is similar to part B of the previous example. And then part two of this example asks for what will be the principal stresses at failure. Okay. So we're going to determine the principal stress at failure, and we're going to use the Mohr circle to do this. So for this example, part A, so we have a shear force, a normal force of normal force of 80 pounds. Then the normal stress sigma prime is 80 divided by cross-sectional area, which is it is the same specimen as example four. So it's 0 0.0278. That's 2880. So that's a normal force, uh, normal stress. And then the shear stress at failure, tau f. So same more coolant failure criterion, we have sigma prime of 2880 and phi prime from example four, 32 degrees. Oh, excuse me, this should be 32. And this is 1800. So that's part one, very similar to the previous example. So given this friction angle, we can predict the shear stress at failure for any given normal force or normal stress. Okay. Uh, part B here, this is a little different. For part B, we're going to find the principal stresses at failure. I'm going to use more circle to do this. And also add a note here. You can also find the inclination of principal planes with the horizontal direction from direct shear test. And to do that, we're going to use this failure envelope here. So I'm going to use this failure envelope. So this is failure angle, this inclination angle 32 degrees, that phi prime. And for that normal force of 80, we calculated its normal stress and shear stress at failure, which is Armour's failure envelope. And we know this point, I'm going to mark it here. This is 2880, 1800. So this is a normal and shear stress at failure we just calculated from part A. So that's that failure point on this more failure envelope. And then we're going to draw the more circle corresponding to this specimen at failure. And the way to do that, first recognize this failure envelope is tangent to the more circle at failure. So this failure envelope or tangential to the more circle. So we know this more coolant failure envelope touches more circle, it's tangential to the more circle or it's tangent to the more circle at failure. And use that property, we can actually construct this more circle. So the way to do this, so I'm going to start from this point, first draw a perpendicular line to this failure envelope. So that's this line here. So this is a perpendicular line to the failure envelope and the intersection of this line with the horizontal axis. So I know this is the center of the Mohr circle. 
in this dashed line showing on this slide, this is actually the radius. Because we know this is a line tangent to Mohr circle. So we can use this tangent property to find the center and also the radius. So once you know the radius and the center, then you can construct the Mohr circle. So that's the next step. So that's how you construct this Mohr circle at failure. So this is this is corresponding to that direct shear test. Once you have this Mohr circle, and then the principal stresses are basically these intersections with the normal stress axis. The larger of these two is the major principal stress. And you can read this directly from graph. And this is about a little over 6,000. So it's about So this is a value I read directly from this graph, from this horizontal axis. It's a little over 6,000, so it's about 6,005. And then the smaller of the two intersection, this is your minor principal stress, we call sigma three. And this is uh, effective stress, one, sigma one prime, sigma three prime. And this is about 1860. So again, read this value directly from the graph. So that's a value of principal stresses in direct shear test okay, for this direct shear test. As I mentioned, from this more circle, you can actually find the inclination of the principal planes. And the way to do that, I'm going to show that really uh, quickly. It's not asked in this problem, but you can find that using the pole. And the way to do that, so this is a plane. So this is normal and shear stress. So remember, this is a normal and shear stress on that failure plane. And for direct shear tests, we know the failure plane is horizontal. So this is a horizontal plane. So in direct shear test, again, remember, we are forcing the sample to fail horizontally. So we know the direction of the failure plane, orientation of the failure plane is horizontal, which means this is a point with known stresses and known direction, plane orientation. So we can find the pole of this Mohr circle. So this is a line parallel. So remember in the pole method, if you start from this point with known stress and knowing plane orientation, if you draw a line parallel to that, you're going to intersect Mohr circle at the pole. Okay, so this is a pole. And if you connect the pole to any point on the Mohr circle, that line is going to be parallel to the plane where that stress acts. In this case, this is a plane of the principal stresses. So that's basically your principal planes. So this is parallel. Since you're connecting the pole to the major principal stress, so this is major principal stress. So this line is going to be parallel to your major principal plane. That's where that sigma one acts. Okay. All right. So this is basically that extra example. And this example shows what you can get from this direct shear test results. In addition to the shear strength parameters, you can actually identify the inclination of major principal planes, minor principal planes, and also those principal stress values using this Mohr circle.